On International Literacy Day, the 8th of September 2010, I found myself in Kusumbara in Bihar, India, a village in which the majority of children do not attend school. When I asked my local contacts, two TV reporters and a secondary school headmistress, why this was the case, various answers were forthcoming. Kusumbara's inhabitants are so poor that many cannot afford to pay even 50 to 70 rupees per month in school fees, or around one euro. Because the parents are illiterate themselves, they do not consider schooling to be important for their children. And, perhaps the most crushing reason of all, members of the Mahadalit caste, one of the social groups classified as quote-unquote untouchable, normally don't go to school. One young lady from Kusumbara, however, has broken the mold and become the exception to this unfortunate rule. Bharti Kumari, aged approximately 12 years old, and she was the reason why I had come here. Every day, Bharti takes the bus to a well-reputed public secondary school, where her teacher describes her as diligent and focused, as well as gifted. When she returns home in the afternoon, at around 4 p.m., she gathers her young neighbors together so that she can share with them what she has learned. I had read about Barty in a brief Sunday Times article published on April 18, 2010, which described her as the head teacher of Kusumbara's school. Moved and impressed by her determination, I decided to go and meet her in person. Yet Barty's story is not without its riddles. The Bihari TV reporter who facilitated my visit to Kusumbara was very insistent on monitoring any and all communication with Barty, including donations. What exactly is this individual's interest in Barty and his relationship to her community? I often wondered to myself. One of this reporter's colleagues made a point of finding me in my hotel room on the evening I arrived in the town of Derionson in order to introduce himself as the one who first covered Barty's story. Thanks to his work, he said, several Indian businessmen had put 11,000 rupees, or around 180 euro, into a bank account for Barty, and he indicated that I ought to follow suit. I have since asked repeatedly to be put in touch with these businessmen and to be provided with the banking details of Barty's trust fund, only to be met with a wall of silence. Tragically, research that I have since done into the socio-political situation in Bihar and adjacent regions has revealed a vicious circle that seems intent on perpetuating itself. The ongoing presence of Naxalite, or Maoist, insurgent groups in these remote areas acting as a kind of parallel administration, feeds the Indian government's apparent lack of commitment to their socio-economic development. This in spite of both the current economic boom and the abundant mineral and other resources to be found in these provinces. In such a political vacuum, unfortunately, it seems that anyone and everyone is fair game. As for my impression of Bharti herself, at first she was quite withdrawn. Sullen, perhaps sad, dejected, or some combination of all three? At one point, when I was asking her about the obstacles she faces in teaching the other children, she simply stared at the ground and said, I feel so alone. Rarely have I felt so helpless in the face of another human being's pain, or have I so wanted to be able to do something useful or constructive. <laughs> Why is her work important? Why is it so important to share her knowledge with everybody else? How will they benefit from this? Why is it important? school 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 हमारे लिए स्कूल मजबूर है हम हम सोचे अपनों पढ़े या दूसरों को पढ़े स्कूल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर मी एंड स्टडी एंड आई शेयर ऑल किड्स टू 
surely the bearer of such noble sentiment towards her fellow man should not be obliged to walk alone.